Good afternoon. Welcome to our presentation. This is Florida International University team. And our project is automation of traffic signal plan modification decision in response to non-recurrent congestion. Our presentation consists of five parts. I, Radip Shah, going to talk about the existing problem and the solution. And then Sahanin will show how the solution work in the field. Hector will highlight important features of the solution. And then Chris will present the implementation timeline and the cost. Finally, Kamal will conclude the presentation with some expected benefits from our solution. So let's talk about the problem first. Congestion is a major concern in the arterial network for all the stakeholders. In 2019, United States lost almost $88 billion due to congestion. Out of that, more than 50% congestion occurred due to non-recurrent events such as work zone, demand surge, incident, or diversion. All these events either increase the demand or reduce the capacity that affects the performance of the traffic signal control. Therefore, agency needs to introduce a event-based traffic signal control plan because a proper plan itself able to reduce congestion and improve the mobility by 10 to 50 percent. So what are the signal control systems available to the agency? Over 300,000 signalized intersections across the country, most of them are operated under a time-of-day plan-based control system. Only a small subset of intersections operated under an adaptive traffic control system, although their true adaptability is still a major concern. Besides these two systems, only a small number of intersections operated through a new system introduced by some agency that are a time-based control system with an expert intervention, a hybrid system where during a non-recurrent event, expert overrides the time of day plan with a new plan corresponding to the non-recurrent event. All these existing systems have some shortcomings, such as time of day plan-based control system cannot respond to the variation of the traffic at the same time also cannot respond to the non-recurrent event. However, on the other hand, the adaptive traffic control system may respond to the variation of the traffic in some extent. However, it is very costly at the same time for the, the performance of this system under long queue and over precision still needs to be evaluated. The third hybrid system introduced by some agency, it is also costly, reactive, time consuming and also not available for 24-7. In these circumstances, we are offering a new solution that resolves all these difficulties while it is easily implementable within the existing system. We termed it as a special signal control plan development system. So what does this solution mean? This solution means it's a computer software that consists of two modules, in module one and module two. In module one, which works in the back end of the software that automates the expert decision using some machine learning technique while in the front end, the module 2 generates the decision based on the non recurrent event. Now I will continue to the software detail and its application. The software in the background has two machine learning models. One is decision tree, another is fuzzy rule based system. At first, we input the expert decision into the decision tree, we get the preliminary rules and membership function. These rules and membership fun functions are feeded to the fuzzy rule based system in order to replicate the human decision. The fuzzy rule based system has four steps, fuzzification, knowledge based, fuzzy interface engine and defuzzification. This two machine learning model running in the background give us the output from the software. Let's explain how the software can be used with an example. Say it is a typical day in the morning peak hour in this intersection, we have an upstream intersection which is connected to a ramp. This intersection has four lane in the eastbound direction through movement. So if there is an incident and two lanes are blocked, there will be queue forming from this intersection to the upstream intersection. We anticipated the queue length will be 2,500 feet. So in this example, how the software will work? Software has five inputs. The first input is incident start time. It is a morning peak hour recorded the incident start time as one. The queue length is 2,500 feet. The upstream intersection important, so importance is con considered as very important, 53, capacity reduction ratio is 0.5 because 2 out of 4 lane is blocked. The software gives us the output of 41% G over C ratio increment. So what does this 41% mean? So if the normal green time is 66 seconds and normal G over C ratio is 0.37 seconds, we increase the G over C ratio by 41%, it is 0.52 and we get the modified green time 93 seconds. 
So in this case, we'll increase the eastbound green time from 66 seconds to 93 seconds. Now I would like to highlight some of the main features of this application. First, I should say that this app is easy to implement because it can work with the existing system. By not requiring additional infrastructure, only a low investment amount is needed for its implementation. The app is based on state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms and programming tools that enable efficient processing of large amounts of data while allowing continuous model improvement and full automation. In fourth place comes the fact that this app uh, ensures full-time service by being available 24 hours a day and seven days a week. And lastly, the capability for expansion and integration with other systems is also an important trait of this app. And for that, I will elaborate a little bit more in the next slide. When it comes to expansion capabilities, we must mention three important subjects. First, connected vehicle technologies. A significant increase in market penetration for connected vehicles is expected in the near future. The utilization of connected vehicles data in our model can potentially enhance its performance for real-time analysis. The integration of connected vehicle technology is possible thanks to the RKT and CIT framework that provide common ground and key interfaces for application development. We also have ATSPM system, which if incorporated could complement our app by improving data availability for monitoring traffic signal performance. ATSPM integration can be achieved by following the NTCIP standards for control equipment communications. Finally, the possibility to extend this app to other agencies that deal with signal control, like the police department, allow new and diverse users to take advantage of the benefits of the app for the generation of the appropriate signal timing plan. Now let's talk about our deployment strategy and cost estimation. So our deployment strategy is basically based on two phases. We have the phase one that we start from the beginning of the project and end at the deployment of the software, and then we move to the phase two, which starts from the deployment of the software until the project maturation. The phase one has five modules and has a duration of six months. During this phase one, we're gonna treat the business model. We're gonna talk about the, the design of the software, the coding of the software. Then after the coding, we're gonna make sure that the software meet the requirements. So we're gonna do a testing, which is the quality assurance, and finish the phase one with the deployment. After deploy the software, we're going to move to the phase two, which has a duration of five years, and basically based on the maintenance and operation of the monitoring of the software. As of today, we already complete three steps of the phase one, which is the business model, the design, and the coding. But due to the current COVID-19 situation, we, was, we have some delay in moving to the next step of quality insurance and completing the phase one. Then let's talk about the cost estimation. Our cost estimation is still based on the two phases that I mentioned in the deployment strategy, which is the phase one from the start of the project to the deployment, and phase two for the deployment to the project maturation. Phase one has a total cost of $54,000, and out of this $54,000, $38,000 is allocated to the software coding, which represents about 50% of the total cost of the project. Then for phase two, phase two has a, total, has a cost of $21,600, and in the 21,600, we include the overhead costs for the project, which gives us a total cost of 75,600 for the entire project. I would also like to mention that this total estimation is based on the $50 hour average hourly rate fee for the coding development. Now, in highlighting the benefits of this application, first of all, it will definitely ensure a better and more efficient response to non-recurrent congestion, which will improve safety, mobility, and environmental conditions. So starting with the safety and environmental benefits, by reducing the reaction time to non-recurrent congestion and the associated queues, especially due to accidents, this will reduce secondary crashes, which will improve safety. Also, by reducing the total and average delay, this will significantly decrease the fuel consumption and emissions. Moving on to the mobility benefits, as you can see in the associated graph, the application significantly decreases delay per vehicle on an average of around 96 seconds per vehicle, and it also mitigates non-recurrent congestion and queue spillbacks. Finally, to assess the economic benefits, we ran a benefit cost analysis using the, the data that we got from simulation and using the yearly estimated cost that Chris just mentioned of around $75,000. 
and we estimated a yearly benefit of around six hundred thousand dollars. We also did a projection, a five-year projection, using a six percent interest rate, and the benefit cost ratio as the result came out to be twenty to one. Thank you for attending, and we would like to acknowledge FDOT, National Operations Center of Excellence, and Stride for their support.